So I spent a large portion of my childhood uh, growing up in Japan and Taiwan and China. And so compared to the U.S., um, it's, you know, each, each of those countries are, are very different. And I feel like sometimes they're all kind of lumped into one um, by, by Americans. Um, you know, not an ill-intentioned or anything, but they kind of think they're all in the same region, so they're probably all alike. Um, in terms of Japan, Japan's very, I feel like very organized and clean and very um, value-centered. Um, they definitely um, are hard workers and, and so they're, they're really all on like that organization and so you see that in all aspects of kind of, of living in Japan, uh, whether it's the streets, how they're organized and how they're very clean, you hardly see any trash lying around in places or how the trains will always arrive on time and they're never late or um, how there's you know really good road signs and this infrastructure all built into the place. Um, Taiwan's a little more, uh, not, it's definitely civilized, um, and I, I'd say it's a first world country in my mind, uh, even though they're, it, it's more kind of a tropical feel to it, it's right along the equator, and so you, uh, definitely feel the heat in the summers, there's typhoons, both, both in Taiwan and Japan, that will come throughout the summer, and so, you know, some days you, you can't really go out or you lose power to your home because the, the nearest uh, electric tower like fell down on the ground or, or things like that. But Taiwan, there's lots of great fruit. You can get really cheap mangoes and papayas and fresh squeezed orange juice for, for really cheap. And so that was probably like my favorite thing about growing up in, in Taiwan was was the food just how good it was and you felt pretty safe about eating it um in china you were a little less sure about if you could eat certain things because you weren't sure how sanitary it might be um, but you could still find really great places and then again like taiwan and china sometimes are they're looped into a similar category but for the most part taiwan um the the people there feel very independent from from the mainland and they have the autonomy to, to do things on their own. So they have a democracy, they, they have elections, and there's no censorship of, or any of that kind of thing. Whereas, whereas in China, like uh, when I was there in high school, you wouldn't be able to get on Facebook at certain times. You wouldn't be able to access CNN, and there is restriction on all these news things. And Japan on the other side, much more traditional in the sense of Buddhism and uh, what they call Shinto is their, is their kind of offshoot of Buddhism that they, they, they profess to believe. But in all through those cultures, it's very ancestral, very much family piety, and making sure that, you know, you're respecting your family respect. Respect's a big word for, for any three of those, those places that you grew up. And, I mean, you see that here in the, the States, too. I feel like it's much more emphasized in in Asia, at least where I lived. Um, culture shock, just language. Um, you know, here you, you see a little more diversity here, uh, especially if you're in bigger cities like Los Angeles or Washington DC or, or anywhere like that. Um, you'll see, you know, Hispanics, you'll see blacks, you'll see Asians and Caucasians. Um, for the most part, you don't have quite the, the blend in those places. So if you were Caucasian going into one of those countries, you'd feel very much like minority. Um, I mean, I still feel like a minority sometimes here in Utah, but um, it, I feel like it's much more exaggerated when it comes to um, missionaries who, who are Caucasian going into um, Asian countries. And so that's kind of an adjustment if you're used to kind of blending in. You're, you're definitely not blending in anymore. And it's gotten a lot better, but it's still something exciting for for, for natives to, to kind of see everybody who's who looks different. And so you, you do generate some attention. The language is completely different. You're not going to be able to 
pick up bits and pieces like you would if it's like Spanish or some European language. And so that can be hard, but for the most part, um, there's signs and everything that are translated in English as well as a native language. And so it's easy enough to get around. Um, and people are very friendly. They'll, they're willing to help you um, in that sense. And so 